opinions and attitudes expressed by us in our music and lyrics do not represent those of Capital Cable TV. The opinions and attitudes are represented here in their own context. If we offend you in any way, which we might, I recommend that you not listen. Get coming! 
SNFU mean? Well, to me, SNFU stands for um, Systematic uh, New Funk Unit. That's what it means to me. This guy. Uh, well, my own my own personal feelings about it, and my meaning is, is Sally never finds us. <coughs> <laughs> And my interpretation of the spell is um, sausage is never fried unevenly. S N F U. Uh, uh, hi, my name is uh, uh, S N F U. <laughs> Johnny something or other unusually. <laughs> this guy. What are you, Jim? Go, oh, Jimbo. Silly name for us. <laughs> <laughs> Set shows, and we just sort of had some creative instincts, so we thought we it's just something something to do, and we like to see, and I like to see other people involved, and I like to see something, it's just like an alternative to all the stuff that's happening. Yeah, and, for, fun. and first of all, there's uh, I've noticed a lot of people are sort of into hardcore music, but I was sort of wondering why they were into that if there wasn't a band that represented that aspect, so we filled the gap. What makes your music different from, say, heavy metal? Fast. It's maybe maybe a little more energy and and not as and not as slick and not not as much of a uh, a, a, a lot less glitter. Yeah. Slim yeah. Whitman. It's not as much of an act. It's not as much of an act as it. It's all. I I think I hope so. I hope that's what people see. Well, I think heavy metal music is more just party down music, and um, <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, hardcore murder. says something to it, and it's it basically. It's more, I don't know, from the street or something. Who or what are your influences? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charles my, Manson. My, my personal, personal influence is like, John Belushi is one of my influences. <laughs> Dwayne Peters. Dwayne uh, Peters? Who's that? Skateboard <laughs> punk. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a famous skateboarder from California. Oh, and, hold it, hold it. Uh, and, lots, and bands, probably a lot of bands that no one's ever heard of. But I would like to die. DOA circuits, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, anything with credibility is what I like. I'm sort of the main lyric writer, even though I didn't want to be, but that, that's the way it came out. Um, as for inspiration, I don't know, newspaper help sometimes. Personal experiences I don't write from because I don't usually have them. Um, I don't know, just things I dream up when I'm drunk. That's one of my major influences is alcohol, and I'm proud of it. Because it's fun to be drunk sometimes. Is there a large enough audience? Not really. Not in Edmonton. No. There will no. be. There is going to be. For us, but Hopefully in the future. Well, what was the question again? Is there enough of an audience? For uh, no, music? not at all. See, that's the thing. Um, Edmonton, they don't want to open up to, you know, I mean, lo lots of other cities have lots of other hardcore bands and stuff. Uh, since we started, I've seen more bands, like right now, there's a couple more bands. Like, there's Down Syndrome. And there's a couple other bands. Like and Six Million Jim Wobos. <laughs> and a couple other bands that was started from nothing. And it's, I think it's getting bigger. Do you have trouble finding a place to play? That's the main thing. Yeah, that's the main thing. Nobody gives us a chance at all. Yeah, nobody really takes us seriously. Everyone just thinks we don't practice and stuff. They just think we're, we're not serious at all. Well, we've been, we've been practicing then. Like the band formed about almost two years ago. But we've only played like five times, so I don't know why. That's probably because they don't take us seriously. People too. If, if, <laughs> it's, if, if one person would give us a chance, right, and, and start opening up, I hope we gotta work harder to this. But yeah, well, it's get it's getting to the point that the only time we can play is whether we set it up ourselves, and that's what we plan to do this year. Is set up a lot more gigs uh, because like. One of the guys just said we've been around for two years and we've only played about five times. So uh, this year it's probably going to happen. We're going to play a lot more. I'm going to put on our own gigs if no one's going to give us a chance to play. We played the Creed um, for the Westwatch project, and we're really into playing house parties. So if anyone wants us to play a house party, we'll play it. <laughs> for sure. We'll do two sets even. <laughs> and we'll do a 30-minute version of Wild for that and then his request. And weddings, bar mitzvahs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Funerals, do anything. anything. Do you, Funerals. Do you think your appearance has anything to do why you're not quite accepted? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, unfortunately it does, but um, 
I don't think that should matter whether you're a person or whether you're in a band or what, but um, some people don't see it that way. They judge the book by its cover. And why I figure that's um, a bit on the wrong side. That's for sure. Why would you, why is the hairdo, why is he clothing in his, in his torn t shirt? This is a hairdo? <laughs> this is that's a hairdo. This is this is well, my ancestors are not Indians, but they, but they think that I am. See, I walk down past Boyle Street there, and they go, look at that, you know, and uh, I'd be walking down there. It's just a haircut. Who cares what a person looks like? I'm smarter than anybody, you know, like. Yeah, it's just more or less a statement saying, um, I don't want to be classified in the same group as a business person. I don't want to be classified in the same group as um, the regular high school student. So this is saying we're a bit differently, and I think my mother did a really good job sewing these ribs into my pants, <laughs> and I want to be the poster boy for Hawaiian Punch. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. That's my career. Today. Do you find other people alienate themselves from you because you wear your pants? Um, I think they're just scared to come up and talk to us just because the way we look, and we're no different than anyone else. I can uh, be a friendly sort of guy. Does it interfere with your daily life, like getting a job or what happens? Uh, well, I work full time at Slave Co. Department Store where we've got Crisco oil on sale this week. So if anyone wants to come, to come down and have a Mazzola party, it's really, really cheap. And they don't seem to mind your uh, Well, they say wear it down a bit. Lately they've been saying uh, something about it, but usually it doesn't affect me. Fifteen years ago it was a hippie thing. And it was the exact same thing, except it was long hair and flared pants and love beads. It was no different, and they were all standing up for the same thing, more or less. Peace and uh, no more wars and no more violence and this and that. But they weren't accepted then either. Are you guys really the angry youth? I've got no outright anger against society. Um, it's a lot deeper. I don't know. It's just, I'm here. I've got to learn to live with this life. Uh, if I didn't want to live, I'd probably be dead like two years ago. So if I obviously hated it, then I wouldn't be here. So I'm here right now, so I, I guess I like this world. Like, are you ang You say you're not angry youth, but you portray the no, image. No, but, but we're stating we're stating opinions, and uh, and I think I think we're just trying to cope, and I th I think we're coping pretty well, and we're just trying to mix in. I wouldn't take our um, message as angry. It's a bit on the negative side, um, but it's not really, let's go all out and kill everybody that's different than us. Um, we just live the way we are. I can't afford clothes. That's my problem. And that's why I'm wearing these rags. Are you trying to give a message to the world with your music? No, because I don't think um, the world won't listen. Music's really going to change the world, like it's going to take more than that to change the world. Probably um, a war is going to change the world.
If Edmonton wasn't 10 years behind the rest of the world, we would have a larger audience and we'd be more accepted. If you know what I mean. If you take cities like Vancouver, Winnipeg, Calgary, Toronto, any city in the States, this type of music has a much larger following and it's a way bigger scene. Here it just seems that uh, maybe 10 years from now there will be 300 people coming to see us. Now there's maybe 100, 50 or whatever. Is Whereas in all those cities it's much, much larger. Is it a matter of the public not knowing about the music or knowing about you? I don't know. Is it Partially, I would think. There's just not enough people in the There's place. just not enough people that are into that type of thing, the they're hardcore. Not, they're not ready for it, I think, to be part of it. What makes them ready? I don't know if they want to accept it or not. I guess they just don't want to accept it or something. I think it's, it's just an obstacle to overcome, and we've got we to make it grow, right? That's it takes time. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, we're, we're more or less just playing for the minority of the people that like us, and to me, that was one of the reasons why the band started was... Uh, like I said, there was all these people into uh, fast, aggressive dance music, but there was no band. Like, it, it was pretty ridiculous to go up there and thrash your brains out and do stage dives to try 59. <laughs> so we thought, well, we form a band and give these something to talk. No. Give these people something to thrash about. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're supporting the underdog. Explain and that's why thrashing. we only have a following. Thrashing? It's uh, do you want a demo? <laughs> no, no. Or do you just want a, a description? A description, and why do people do it? Okay, thra thrashing to me, um, while well, some people call it slam dancing, if, if you've seen the Quincy show. Donahue? I think that's where it evolved from. Um, I don't know, it's just dancing rapidly, and it's a fast, rough housing to fast music. That's it's a, it a way of getting your aggression out without uh, taking it out on other people, without using violence or picking fights. Doesn't it start fights? No. It looks, it, see that, that's a problem there too. It looks, it looks like everyone's there to beat up each other, but mainly I know when I'm up there thrashing that I know most of the people on the floor, and so it's just a, a fun sort of thing, like a game of piggyback or something. Just the, the well, you know, it's a lot more exciting than sitting at some place going like this, boom, 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 boom. No, it's, a, yeah, it's just the same. No, I mean, it's more more physical body contact and stuff. It's a lot more exciting than, you know, sitting there like trying to pretend that you're in John Travolta or something. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot more it's exciting. No, it's, no, it's no different than jiving to 50s rock and roll yeah. or, or skanking to reggae or whatever you want. You know, every music has the audience. No audience is going to sit there and go, watch the band, right? <laughs> and I think it's just... It's just a natural reaction to it. The stage would probably just be an extension of, of where they are, I guess. You know, it's just... That's another difference from heavy metal. If you go to a heavy metal concert, everyone's just sitting in their chairs, just going... And I, I don't really find that enjoyable, personally, just sitting in a chair watching a band. Unless they're, I don't know, if they're really hot, you think so. <laughs> but I don't really get it. You know? that's, it's, that's mostly what it is. It's fun. Is We're not a uh, heavy political also, band or anything of that sort. Also, you're, you're saying that, that oh, there's heavy metal and us are so close, but yet you look at us and you can tell the difference. And I don't think we should have to tell people what's so different about us. I think they can just look at us and they can tell. If you, yeah, if you <laughs> listen to the music, we sound nothing like a heavy metal band, but if you want to call us a heavy metal band, go ahead, the choice is yours. Yeah. We're not hardcore, we're not, we're not heavy metal, we're, we're SNFU, right? And, and we're, not, we're, not, we're not labeling us, and I don't want people to label us. Because that just traps you and it confines you, and I don't want that. I'll know we really made it here when I see 300 people at one of our gigs just slamming and having a fun time. And just getting so pissed out of their heads they forget their name. I don't know if uh, any other guys in the band have a different meaning of it. Oh, I... That basically sums that's it up, basically, yeah. yeah. That's it's it. When we can pack the place we play, big or small, and... Uh, Everybody's there and enjoys themselves. Everybody goes out. That's when I would feel that we've succeeded. Yeah, when when people say, yeah, I like that band called SNF. <laughs> we had fun tonight. Guitar playing itself, do you rely on finesse and technical skill or just all in out power? I think I'm more into finesse and stuff like that. And I don't know, 
more similar to that. Because that's kind of, I'm not really as much into hardcore music as Marcus. That's maybe why I'm more into pop stuff. Yeah, he listens to two drops of and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I do like some hardcore. Believe, I don't like as much of it, though. Believe it or not. No, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with mixing it. I think mixing it makes it all the better, more enjoyable. You get a more wider audience and it makes it more accessible to people. Sim simplicity is what music is basically. A pop music or rock and roll is about. Yeah, simplicity is part of it. If you go too far, it's not safe. It's just jazz. Yeah, you're putting it. You're putting it out of the reach of people. You know, it, but there's nothing wrong with getting complicated. Also, right? Well, it's not as fun to play. You know, like we don't. We don't want to make it so complicated, and so people just, you know, what are they doing? <laughs> to me, more or less, being in the band is more an attitude than anything else because I don't claim myself as being a singer. Um, I'm just up there performing. You don't, you don't even have to know how to play your instruments to form a band. And all you have to do is have that spirit and attitude. Say, yeah, we want to, we want to form a band, and that shows something right there. It's better than uh, sitting at home not doing something. It's better than sitting at home complaining that there's nothing to do. That's the best way. But we used to sit home and complain that there's nothing to do. But I when we started do. a band. We started a band, and uh, now we've got something to do with that time. <laughs> how can we write a 30 second song? How can, how can oh, you write a 30 second song? <laughs> That's neat. Throw it to the best kind. Um, hey, let him spread his wings. <laughs> we've uh, 30 second songs. That's actually our average. Well, that's around our average time. We're beginning to break uh, an 18 second song into the world right now. But I figure if you can say something. In three minutes, you can probably say the same thing in 30 seconds, and this way you don't have to repeat yourself. But we're not really trying to write three-second songs, just the way they happen to be. Sticks and, <laughs> Sticks and stones, more or less, is uh, use against the police, and the general message is there's sort of no use fighting them, because all you're going to do is end up getting your head beaten in by a billy club, and that's not worth really fighting against the police at all. And that's all Sticks and Stones is about. The Sun Monster, what that mainly is about, it's about parents seeing their kid, whether he has really long hair, or whether his hair is spiked up like a pineapple, or, or whatever. Uh, or the parents don't like what he looks like. The parents don't agree with what he has to say. So they feel embarrassed about that. So they hide him from all his friends. So they lock him up in the cellar and treat him like a monster. I don't see where politics come in that at all. So you're talking about social commentary? I wouldn't say social com commentary. It's just more or less experiences. Uh, not our experiences, but I know a lot of a lot of kids that um, just because they look a bit sort of strange, they're alienated from their parents because their parents say, ooh, how can I bring up something as disgusting looking as that? So. <laughs> They say, uh, well, I'm having some friends coming over to play bridge. Why don't you leave the house for a bit? Um.
feelings and attitudes expressed by us in our music and lyrics um, are not really those that... Let's do it over again. The opinion... Okay, one more time. These opinions and attitudes are, rep are presented here and there. Let's... I'm actually having trouble reading this. To the okay, here we go again. Um, the opinions and attitude... <coughs> The opinions and attitudes expressed by us in this uh, take 77, I recommend that you not listen, and I wouldn't if you dare. It's at your own risk, so to speak. <laughs> so, is this going to be the actual take? Sound like this. 